what we'll talk about in the battery day is also just how much the the grids around the world and, and uh, actually especially in the US are greening um, it's it's actually much faster than I think people realize uh, the US is moving towards sustainable energy and so as we move more and more to sustainable energy then effectively you end up building the the solar factories and the uh, the uh, car factories themselves with with solar um, over time you do or, or with sustainable energy over time you, you'll even mine with, with sustainable energy and eventually it will it will get to an effective emissions of zero so that's where, that's that's where things will end up yeah hi and welcome to renewable energy investments today we have a special episode we're going to discuss why an entire sector may be poised for significant growth in the immediately foreseeable future. You guessed it, we're talking about the renewable energy sector. In this video, we're going to discuss why the US government may provide a massive boost to renewable energy stocks. Then I'm going to discuss six stocks that I'm considering adding to my portfolio to take advantage of this massive opportunity. But first, consider hitting that thumbs up button as it helps out this channel in a massive way. Alright, let's get started right now. Okay, so if you follow this channel, you'll already know that renewable energy is approaching an inflection point of massive growth. This is because the level S cost of renewable energy is just now becoming more economical than coal, oil, and gas. In other words, it's becoming cheaper to generate electricity from solar and wind than it is from a typical power plant. Cost. I, mean, I think the thing that people yeah. haven't fully internalized is once we do get to the 25k car, the ownership cost of that car is incredibly lower than the prior car. And then on the solar side and wind, with the cost of solar and wind coming down and with batteries coming down with them, the actual cost of energy on the grid is going down. So we're, we're sort of moving to our, towards a sustainable lower cost future. So it, it, there's not really a sacrifice. Yeah, that's true. It, it is a false dichotomy to say that it's like it's either prosperity or sustainability. Uh, this is often used you know, buy oil and gas to say like, oh, well, do you want people to lose their jobs? Do you want to have, do you want lower people's standards, standards of living? Do you want to, you know, make all these economic sacrifices, uh, really, in, in order to have sustainability? And the reality, as Drew was saying, uh, is that uh, a sustainable energy is going to be lower cost, not higher cost, than uh, fossil fuels. I expect renewable energy will become the dominant source of new energy generation over the next five to ten years. Let's just put it that way. But that's old news. What we have before us today are three compelling reasons why the US government could cause a spike in renewable energy investments in the very near future. First, renewable energy aligns with the US's national interest of becoming less reliant on foreign nations. The mask shortage brought on by the Roni Rona showed America the dangers of being reliant on foreign powers for critical supplies. And well, we currently depend on a whole lot of cheap oil imports from the Middle East and Russia to fulfill our energy needs. Switching to renewable energy will allow us to break our dependence on foreign powers for oil. This would increase our bargaining position with such nations, and also halts the billions of dollars flowing from the US to Russia and the Middle East, which includes nations whose interests are typically at odds with that of the United States. And for these reasons, securing energy independence makes sense from a geopolitical and national security interest perspective. Second, building out a robust renewable energy infrastructure would create a whole lot of jobs in the US, something we desperately need given today's unemployment numbers. Getting unemployed individuals back to work by investing in renewable energy assets makes a whole lot more sense than simply giving away free stimulus money. Renewables, ultimately, would provide a nice return on investment and lower cost of energy for many years to come, so this is a very attractive option. Last but not least, we have the 2020 presidential election. It's no secret that the Biden camp is campaigning on a commitment to fight climate change, and if the Democrats win, oh boy. If you thought the 26% solar tax credit under the Trump administration was generous, just wait for the government incentives from a Biden administration we could see more tax credits for renewable energy installations, a whole boatload of government grants to renewable energy companies, and government-sponsored renewable energy projects, and even a potential carbon tax. Let's just say the economics for renewable energy companies could start to get a whole lot more attractive. Personally, I would like to build up my renewable energy portfolio a bit more prior to the election. Okay, now for the fun part. 
I'm going to share six renewable energy stocks sitting atop my radar, which I'm considering picking up before the election. I've made in-depth research videos covering each of these, so you can learn more about all of them by checking out the respective videos on my channel page. Without further ado, let's jump right into stocks numbers one and two, which are both leading solar inverter companies. We're talking about Solar Edge and Enphase Energy. Combined, these two companies enjoy a duopoly over the solar inverter market, with a combined US market share of about 80%. Having such a dominant market share gives SolarEdge and Enphase tremendous pricing power, turning their inverter businesses into cash cows. Solar inverters are necessary to turn the DC power generated by solar panels into AC current usable by your household appliances. Any increases to US solar panel installations in the US should translate to even more demand for SolarEdge and Enphase's products. What's even more attractive about these two companies is that they have been reinvesting the cash they've generated over the past few years into research and development, developing new products to expand their businesses to do much, much more than just sell inverters. Some of their other product offerings include batteries for home energy storage, photovoltaic modules, smart appliances, smart home energy management, or even electric vehicle chargers. Okay, so now let's jump right into stocks three and four, which are both companies in the business of generating energy from renewables and then selling this energy to customers for a profit. We're talking about Brookfield Renewable Corp and Nextera Energy. First, Brookfield. Brookfield owns and operates hydro, wind, and solar farms across the world. It just acquired Terraform, making the combined company one of the largest renewable energy generating companies in the world. This acquisition of Terraform allowed Brookfield to massively expand its renewable energy portfolio in one swift, efficient transaction, and created synergies by eliminating duplicative administrative functions going forward. The acquisition also means Brookfield can use its expertise and low cost of capital to improve the economics of all of Terraform's assets, making the combined company much, much more profitable than each company on its own. Next Air runs a very similar business to Brookfield. It owns and operates wind, solar, and battery storage projects across the world. In fact, Nextera is the world's largest producer of solar and wind energy. It has more wind capacity than all but seven countries in the world. In addition to renewable energy projects, Nextera also owns Florida Power & Light, the largest utility provider in the state of Florida. This adds much stability and reliable income streams to the company. As a cherry on top, Nextera recently increased earnings guidance and announced a 4 for 1 stock split. Shareholders, as of October 19, 2020, will receive three additional shares. We'll have to see if the market reacts positively to this split like it did for Apple and Tesla stock. But either way, it sounds to me like Nextera's management team has high expectations for the business over the next few years. It's pretty obvious that favorable government renewable energy policies would be a huge boost to both Nextera and Brookfield. Both companies have vast experience and know-how in the renewable sector and have massive renewable energy project pipelines waiting to be placed into service over the next 5 to 10 years. As a result, these leading renewable energy companies are set up perfectly to capitalize on renewable energy incentives. Any increase in solar credits would result in a direct and immediate boost to profit margins and new project capacity. A carbon tax or clean energy credit could make their energy projects even more cost competitive than coal power plants. And as one final reason to be optimistic, the Fed has indicated it does not plan on raising interest rates for many years to come. Nextera and Brookfield both rely heavily on financing when they build out new projects. So low interest rates is fantastic news, as it should enable both companies to obtain very cheap financing for their energy projects. The end result should be better profit margins. Alright, moving along to stock number 5. This is Hannon Armstrong. Similar to Nextera and Brookfield, Hannon Armstrong invests in solar and wind projects. However, Hannon Armstrong does much more. It also has a behind the meter side of the business, in which it makes investments to improve government and corporate buildings by adding energy storage, installing small scale on site power generation, or improving the building's heating or lighting systems. If the U.S. government expands its energy budget, you can expect Hannon Armstrong to benefit from some of these contracts. But my favorite part of Hannon Armstrong is its diverse array of investment vehicles. For instance, sometimes 
it takes an equity stake in its energy projects. Other times, Hannon Armstrong is awarded government and commercial receivables, or securities. Sometimes, Hannon Armstrong purchases the real estate on which its projects sit. And sometimes, Hannon Armstrong even generates ongoing fees by providing services and asset management. This diverse strategy allows Hannon Armstrong to qualify for real estate investment trust status, which gives it favorable tax treatment and makes it perfect for my Roth IRA. Just like with Nextera and Brookfield, low interest rates and government incentives could be very beneficial to Hannon Armstrong going forward. Stock number six that could benefit massively is none other than Tesla stock. It is a absolutely monumental task to accelerate uh, the advent of sustainable energy. Uh, I mean, the entire global economy is still, you know, more than 99% dependent on, or quote, roughly 99% dependent on fossil fuels. Already the lowest cost solar panel seller in the United States, solar credits would make its solar panels even more affordable. At some point, solar panels become a no-brainer for consumers. We could see a massive boost in demand for Tesla's solar products. And don't forget, these credits could potentially be used not only to offset the cost of Tesla's solar panels, but also the Tesla solar roof, a product with quite a high price tag. Always keep in mind that Elon is on record saying that Tesla's energy business will grow to be just as large as its electric vehicle business. I'm willing to bet we're just about to start seeing Tesla's energy business accelerate growth rapidly. So although electric cars kind of get a lot of press right now, they, they, they're still, and, and, and there's still very few, as a percentage of the total global fleet, is practically nothing. It's, I would say, yes, less than 1% of the global fleet is electric right now. I would not be surprised at all to see some legislation aimed at accelerating a transition to electric vehicles in the United States, whether it be more electric vehicle credits, a carbon tax, or otherwise. If the Biden administration is serious about climate change, reducing transportation carbon emissions is paramount. Look at what California just did. They completely banned sales of new gas cars beginning in 2035. This could be a sign of things to come across the board. Like I said, we already published deep dive videos into each of these six companies, as well as many other renewable energy companies. If you're interested, I invite you to check out the videos on our channel page to learn more. Let me know in that comment section below. Which renewable energy stocks do you like the best? Do you think getting in before the election is a strategy that will pay off? Personally, even though I have slowed my buying of stocks recently due to the massive run-up of the market in general, I would still like to nibble on some renewable energy stocks ahead of the 2020 election. And if we are fortunate enough to get a major sell-off or correction, I would certainly like to pick up a whole lot of renewable energy shares. For more sustainable energy and electric vehicle investing content, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.